Hello everybody, and I hope you are having a wonderful, wonderful day. So this is the beginning video for your digestive system, and we're just kind of going to hit the high points of the purpose of your digestive system. Um, I'm going to briefly overview the organs of your digestive system, um, body cavities that it implies, general jobs and that kind of thing, and then in future videos after we've gone over this lovely close-up video, we're going to start going organ by organ because each organ does a different job to the food that you eat. Fortunately, though, this is the body system that y'all probably already went into this knowing the most about. Like, every single one of you guys should be able to look at your screen right now and tell me at least two or three of the organs on here. We've talked about several of them earlier in the class. And even if you hadn't, like, paid attention to know what your pancreas was from the endocrine system, every single one of you can still tell me you put food in your stomach. Intestines come next, right? You all know what your liver is. So all of y'all are, are already somewhat familiar with the organs involved in here. You just may not know some of the specifics that go with them. And that's pretty much what we're going to cover in this, like in this unit. So this one should be one of those relief units for you guys, right? So your digestive system, right, is a singular tube that goes through from mouth to anus and different parts of the tube have specialized into different jobs uh, for what they do. Um, most of or all of your chemical digestion is done by hydrolysis, meaning they're using water to split chemical food molecules apart and that kind of thing. Um, and all of this is so that we can break down carbohydrates like starches and sugars, triglycerides like lipids, fatty, like fatty acid chains, that kind of thing, and proteins down into more basic units so that our body can absorb them and re, like, use them how we see fit from the food that we put into our body. Right? So this is going to have, we're going to be talking a little bit about pH, enzymes, all that kind of good stuff, modes of membrane transport, that kind of good thing. Right? So your brief overview. So your digestive system entire job is to break down the food that you eat, releasing the food's nutrients, absorb that nutrients, and then get rid of the waste from that system from the body, right? Um, that means that this is a pretty straightforward system. It's breaking down the food, getting the good stuff out of the food, then getting the leftover waste out of you and some of the other waste that other parts of you filtered back out of you as well. Um, so... Each organ in the system does a different job to move that along down that assembly line chain of events. And as we've mentioned in other units, this works closely with your endocrine systems because you need some hormone controls in here um, and that kind of thing. And your cardiovascular system. We've mentioned that there is a lot of blood vessels and that sort of thing around your intestines and organs of your digestive system because you have to absorb your nutrients into somewhere, right? It's going to be into the blood vessels. Right? So, introduction to your magical organs of your digestive system. You guys already know most of these. Don't freak out now. Um, so, generally speaking, we can split organs into two different groups for your digestive system. Either it's going to be the actual tube that goes mouth to anus, whose fancy name is the alimentary canal, or it's going to be an accessory organ. Accessory organs are the organs that are not actually part of that tube, but are connected to it and help with these processes. So your alimentary canal, which if we were to, you know, go full on medieval on somebody and gut someone mouth to anus, um, it could be 25 feet long in a living person after all of your muscles have relaxed after you're dead, 35 feet long from like, mouth to anus if I were to stretch out the whole system. It's amazing how much we can pack into our bodies, right? So your alimentary canal from tube to anus going through these organs, right? You have the mouth where you put the food, right? The pharynx, which is the back of your throat above your voice box. 
the esophagus, which is the tube that takes food down to the stomach, and the stomach, which then sends what is now called chyme, um, but its mixture into the small intestines, which then sends everything into the large intestines, which will then lead to the rectum, which collects fecal matter until you have enough of it, to then move through the anus, which is the exit. Right? Those would, that would be the alimentary canal, the straight tube that goes from mouth to anus, mouth, pharynx, esophagus, stomach, small intestine, large intestine, rectum, and anus. Right? The things that help that are not necessarily part of the tube, but that are connected and help. Uh, teeth and tongue are considered helpful because we all like to chew our food, right? Um, your liver and your gallbladder are two very important accessory organs that we will be talking a great deal about. Salivary glands, they help make saliva. And the pancreas. Pancreas is considered an accessory organ, and you can see it hidden right up here behind the stomach uh, because it kind of crawls around right there. But we've talked about your pancreas before, because remember, your pancreas has two full-time jobs. It works full-time for the endocrine system and for your digestive system. Right? So when we are talking about the different muscle layers, I know you guys have discussed this in labs and that kind of thing. Right? So the muscle layers, um, for all of this, the lumen linings go in a very specific order, right? You have the lumen, which is the inner lining of that endothelium that touches the food that you have eaten, right? After that lumen, you have a layer called the mucosa layer. The mucosa layer is the useful layer of that organ. Um, in many of these organs for your digestive system, they make mucus. Underneath that, you have the submucosal layer, which has a great deal of the other parts and uses for that organ. The muscularis externa would be the muscle layers. Most of your organs have at least two muscle layers, a longitudinal one and a, um, oh Lord, I've forgotten the other word, a circular type one. Um, but some of your other muscles, like your stomach, have three muscle layers. So there are different layers of muscle that may be involved. And then the serosa, which is that outer covering of all of the organs in your digestive system. Right, so you have the lumen, mucosa, submucosa, muscularis externa, and serosa. These layers are going to differ in their thickness and how extensive they are based upon which organ we are talking about. Like I've mentioned, you have multiple layers of your muscularis layer, normally a circular and a longitudinal one, but your stomach has an additional oblique layer because your stomach needs more muscles, whereas other parts, not so much. Your stomach may also have a larger, larger mucosal and submucosal layer because it needs to protect you from its own acid that it's making. Um, the different organs in your digestive system have these layers differing based upon different like different uses if I can put it that way um, right so basically if we're going to summarize this your mucosa secretes mucus hormones enzymes that kind of stuff um, but the submucosal layer is the layer with the blood vessels and nerves that begin that interacts and sends signals. The muscularis external layer is the smooth muscle layer of any of these. And then the serosa layer is the most superficial outer protective covering. Right? Um, you, if, we, if you need to know specifics about these layer with an organ, we'll get there. Otherwise, that's just basic info. Right? What to do? So, your nervous system gets kind of fun when we start talking about your um, controls, if that makes sense, right? So your enteric nervous system, right? 
you have your central nervous system that controls a lot of things. And your central nervous system is going to pick up external stimuli, like the sight of smell, the food, taste, thought. So you can be like flipping channels and see Food Network and be like, oh man, that looks fantastic from Iron Chef. I really want to try that. And that's going to trigger your central nervous system to send these external, your automatic, autonomic signals to your nerve plexuses um, or to the nerve plexuses that generally speaking will interact with your digestive system and that's going to make you feel hungry. That's going to start putting like making your stomach grumble or churn um, and it's going to say, hey, we're seeing we're getting a stimuli from food. We are like, this looks delicious and we should be hungry. Let's start making more stomach acid. Let's start rumbling and getting ready to digest food. Um, and your digestive system complies, right? It starts affecting those hormones, the smooth muscle glands, and gets your body ready to eat, essentially. Um, so it's going to change that contractile or secretory secretion activity. The other thing that could potentially affect how you're getting hungry, would be internal stimuli from your GI tract, right? These are chemoreceptors, osmoreceptors, which detect water pressure and that kind of thing, or mechanoreceptors within your individual organs inside your digestive system, right? Um, that means your body is going to detect chemicals within it. That's what chemoreceptors are for, chemical receptors, Right, So they're going to detect chemicals that may need to be digested. So if you are to just put a little bit of sugar in your mouth, for example, that activate the chemical of glucose will activate your salivary glands and your, sal your salivary glands will start making your mouth water. Um, different parts of your digestive system pick up on different chemical reactions and responses, and they're going to, like do what the, whatever they need to do based upon the chemical that just stimulated them. Um, same thing with mechanoreceptors. That would be mechanical things that is being detected, like pressure. So is your stomach full? Is your stomach not full? Should your digestive system push the food on, or should it leave it to digest more? That kind of thing. So remember, these things are detecting different things. And they're sending signals at different times. So when your stomach is completely empty, like, and the mechanoreceptors start going off, they're going to send short reflexes to these local or intrinsic nerve plexuses or your gut brain that tells you, hey, we're empty, go be hungry. Without your need of, like, walking past that delightful bakery that smells so good. Or, you know, turning to the food network or doing whatever it is you do, right? So you have internal stuff that says, hey... Your chemoreceptors in your body are telling you you're low on energy. You have got to get some sugar and caffeine in you right now. Um, or, hey, our stomach's empty. Let's go. Hey, our water, like, we feel like we're thirsty and we need to drink. Osmoreceptors going off. Go get that coffee or water, right? That's going to send these reflexes into play. So you have two things keeping track of when you need to eat or not and that make you feel hungry or not. Um... Your stomach will se will secrete local hormones um, and as well as your small intestines to stimulate target cells of themselves and surrounding organs to make things go off to tell you that you're hungry, essentially. So you have a couple of different things that are watching out for when you get hungry, when you don't, that kind of thing. Either it's going to be an autonomic reflex from your central nervous system going down, I think it's vagus nerve 9 or do your vagus nerve, um, and then double check the nerve on that though. Uh, I haven't gone over my neurological unit in a long time. Um, and then you have the internal stuff that's detecting how empty your stomach is, the chemicals involved, that kind of good stuff. Right? Um, so a couple of things that we need to recognize and know. We've been over the organs, we need to talk about your body cavities. right? So, your intestines can't just be like the headphones in your pocket, right? We know that your the headphones in your pocket are going to get tangled in your pocket, and then you're going to pull them out, and you're going to be like, 
what in the world is this and how do I put this on my ears? Your intestines want to stay basically like in place so they can just move stuff through them. They don't want to accidentally tie into a knot. That's super bad, right? That's really, really bad. Um, so you have a wall of tissue called the mesentery within your abdominal cavity that holds up, right? That is going to hold up all of your intestines. Um, actually, your textbook is slightly older than this, but according to the New England Journal of Medicine a few years ago, they declared that the mesentery is your most recently acknowledged organ. Um, so some newer medical expertise and some newer medical resources are saying the mesentery is your most recent organ. Others, like your textbook and other many other places, don't acknowledge it as such yet. But in this little picture, the mesentery is this blue line that's holding up all of these organs that you can see pointing to here. Um, so the mesentery holds everything up. And that means that you have an area behind the mesentery, right? Which is called the peritoneum, which is its own separate little body cavity. It's like the back the posterior side of your abdominal cavity. It's actually where your pancreas is, as well as part of your small intestines end up there, your duodenum. Um, that's called retroperitoneal because it is behind that. And they hang out with your kidneys because your kidneys from your urinary system are also retroperitoneal, but you don't need to know that until we start talking about your urinary system. Um, everything else is within the peritoneal. The omenta... You have two of them. There's a greater omentum and a lesser omentum. These are actually fat layers that are coming off of your stomach. You have one that's going from the inside of your stomach to your liver. So you have one like sheet of fat, which is the lesser omentum going from the inner curvature of your stomach to your liver to attach them. And then you have another sheet of fat called the greater omentum, which comes off of the greater curvature of the stomach or the outside of the stomach. And it's like, literally it's your belly fat layer. It is going to kind of just drape over, like it's a layer of fat, a sheet of fat that will drape over your large intestines and your small intestines and then loop back around to attach to the large intestines that it fell and draped over. Um, these omenta serve as additional protective layers for these very important organs. Um, as well as an additional energy source in the event that you are starving to death or it's not that optimal harvest season yet in days before refrigeration. Um, so you have extra insulation, you have some protection in there, an extra energy source. There you go. There's a purpose to them. Um, but yeah, and here you have like a side view of all of these organs. So that's your overview of things, right? Um, before we start actually talking about individual organs and their jobs, I'm going to tell you that there are six jobs that your digestive system does. And here we have all six of them, right? Different organs do different jobs, right? So different parts will do different things. Right? Ingestion is actually eating, right? That is putting the food into your system and body. Ingestion's job is pretty much covered by your mouth, right? So this is what your face and your mouth do. Propulsion. Your entire digestive system takes on this job. Um, there are two ways that we can propel, thing, propel things through your system. I'll talk about those in a second. But you're, at no point in time does your body want the stuff that is in your digestive system to just sit there and hold still. It wants stuff to keep moving either quickly or slowly, but it doesn't want things to just like clog up the system. It wants to keep moving stuff in that tube from mouth to anus all the way through. So every part of your digestive system has some form of propulsion. Mechanical digesting that in mechanical digestion is 
what you would think it would be that is legitimately just physically breaking down the food and such that you have eaten. The majority of this is going to happen in your mouth and stomach, though your intestines do this slightly and a little bit as well. Chemical digestion, right, is when you start chemically breaking down your food. So chemical digestion is when chemicals come into play and you are now chemically digesting your food and breaking it down. Absorption is when you are absorbing the nutrients that you have broken down. Oh, um, so mechanical digestion to some degree happens a decent bit through your system. It slows down in your large intestines because there's nothing left to break down once you get there. Um, but at some point in time, from your mouth all the way through to your small intestines, you are in some way mechanically digesting food or like smushing it up and breaking it down. Chemical digestion is mostly though in your stomach and your small intestines or the beginning of your small intestines. Um, your saliva does start that for simple sugars in your mouth. Absorption when you are absorbing the nutrients from your food, that starts like some vitamins and minerals are absorbed in your stomach, but the rest of everything, we're talking small intestines and large intestines. That is the small intestines main job is absorbing the majority of the food nutrients that you eat, right? And you also are reabsorbing water so you don't get dehydrated in your large intestines, as well as salts and other things like that. Defecation is getting rid of the waste that has come about from your eating. And defecation is the pure job of large intestines, rectum, and anus. So those are the six things that your digestive system is going to do. Those are their six jobs. Um, I've explained mechanical digestion. It's physically breaking down your food to give it larger surface area. You're going to cut and grind food or you let your smooth muscles churn it into pieces and mix it, like your stomach and small intestines do. Um, propulsion. There are two ways that food can be propelled through your system, right? depending upon organ. Peristalsis is the method that your esophagus uses. Basically, your esophagus pinches in behind the food that you have just eaten, it's called a bolus at this point in time because your mouth chewed it and like made it into little balls when you were small swallowing it. So it's a bolus. Um, so your esophagus is going to pinch in behind the food and just sort of squeeze it like a toothpaste tube. Squeeze that bolus down to your stomach. Um, right. This is what peristalsis is. Fun fact, it can work against gravity. Um, so any astronauts that are on the International Space Station, this is how they swallow in space when there's zero gravity. Um, if this was dependent on gravity, then they would have difficulty eating. Segmentation is another form of rhythmic movement, but this is found more so in like your small intestines and that sort of thing. It's going to actively mix the food with your digestive juices. So it's going to pinch off pieces of food and then it's going to repinch in to mix, like push together different pieces of food. And it's going to churn back and forth like this until everything is like very well mixed. This is sort of how your, your stomach churns with multiple layers of muscles. Um, and this is how your intestines also mix things while pushing it through your body. Right. So, like I said, this is mouth to small intestines for chemical digestion. Um, different parts of your digestive system are going to focus on chemically digesting different parts of it, right? And for the most part, we're talking about your four basic mono, like your four basic uh, macro molecules that you learned about in basic bio, and like. I'll tell you what digests what as we start going through those organs here, but you don't have to know much about those until we start talking about nutrients, until we get to your nutrients video. Right?
And that's all for this one, guys. We're going to pick up with your mouth next time, and we'll talk probably... Eh, mouth to stomach sounds good to me. Right. So I hope you have a wonderful day, and I'll catch you guys later.